Hello world, this is Maria Vanga. Maria Vanga, your motivational speaker, psychotherapist, lawyer, mother, every other woman. And um, yeah, I am chiming in from Douala, Cameroon. And I am a person with a lived experience that I know with post-traumatic stress disorder. And I have been sharing my reading journey, my reading experience, reading this epic book, What Happened to You by Dr. Perry and Oprah. And yes, I read Dr. Perry's other book written with my ear, The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog, like three years ago. So you see, my brain is like a sponge, always looking out for new things and all of that especially things I don't know about and things I'm curious about. You know, it's all about our brains, our biases and our systems. And that's the chapter I am. Uh, I just read this morning and I want to share my experience within that chapter. Indeed, um, I'm doing it from my bed with my bed cover still on me and my PJ and everything. Um, I'm all about keeping it real. I'm all about, um, you know, sharing it as it goes. And especially for this kind of reading experience, I don't want to tick any box. I don't want to uh, meet up to any standards, to live up to any, to be whatever, you know, all of those implicit biases and uh, norms and conventions and things which, you know, sometimes just freak the life out of somebody. You know, sometimes you just meet somebody and you already go off because well, you expect a lawyer to be this way. And if she's not that way, then she's not a good lawyer. You've not even given her the opportunity to open her mouth, to say something, to write something. No, just because she doesn't look well polished, just because, you know, she doesn't look a certain color, just because, just because, just because. That's what biases are, right? You know, like, um, well, racism. And now it trickles down to you just not wanting to have anything to do with anybody that looks a certain color, you know, uh, um, you don't want to employ anybody or you don't want to come too close to them where you employ them best in what category, you know, and stuff like that. Or, well, you study in that class with that teacher, but you don't accept their help when you have a difficulty with your assignment because they are You've never had anything personal with them, but you just don't trust. You cannot have a relationship with the white or with the black. That's interracial. That is betraying. That is for heaven's sake. And there's so many wonderful people out there in the world. Indeed, Oprah talks about her own um, one experience that really kind of like, you know, shook her up. Uh, she said that she there was a book uh, written by some guy, Shaka Shaku, <laughs> but the guy's real name was what is James White or something. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and that guy was uh, um, arrested and charged with second degree murder or something like that at the age of nineteen. So you can imagine that that child's life up to nineteen has been full of trauma. Indeed, this child was a straight A student up to a certain age. And then, well, they hit the streets. So she explains all of that because she had a two and a half hour interview with this man. He wasn't a child anymore at the time. But this is it. Oprah herself says that when she saw the cover of his book, which was a best-selling book, but she was like, what can this tattooed and um, ex-convict teach me? Fortunately, she went ahead and had this interview and she said that was one of the best experiences she's ever had. Just imagine if Oprah had held back from having this sit down with this man. She said it was for a super soul conversation or something like that. Can you imagine what we ourselves would not have learned from? And now this man, is, is he has been going around talking about his experiences, uh, you know, uh, sharing and all of those kind of things. And some people will still not listen to him because, well, he has tattoos or because, oh, he's an ex-convict or whatsoever, whatsoever. Can you imagine? Bias. Straight. Even if you have heard that, oh, the guy is now transformed, he's reformed because he spent seven years in solitary confinement. Seven. But he says after six years, something happened to him. It was a letter from his son. He said, Daddy, 
I hear you are in prison because you murdered someone. Please stop murdering people. God can forgive your sins. And that was his breakdown. So you never know what happened to somebody. And you never know what can be this person's transformation. That is why compassion is very important. And that is why we need to feed our brain with more positive than negative. You see, she was talking about her in her school, the academy in South Africa. Um, the black teachers and the white teachers didn't get along. And so she had to bring Dr. Perry over to come and help them understand that it was what was stored there in the brain that just made them have this bias about each other. And so they had to walk through that. But are people patient? Even therapists, I'm a therapist myself. You know, I, I do ask my clients what happened to you. I want to know their story and stuff. But sometimes, seriously, I can also be like, oh, this is just too boring. This is too long. Can they even afford all the sessions that they need to get to this? Actually, people there are so many people who cannot afford therapy. So Dr. Perry also uh, uh, talks about um, the whole system having to be like a therapeutic web for the people. Does the system have that patience? How many schools care about the children they are teaching? Teachers just beat and beat and beat, not even knowing about, not caring. They don't have time to want to know about the child's background, what happened to the child and stuff like that. And before you know it, we have labeled the child, stubborn child, Boston Institute child, you know, delinquent, juvenile delinquent, mental health, whatever, at ADHD, medication, and they out. I once watched a show in Yala, Fix My Life, and she was looking at the school to prison pipeline and how it's really very um, operational out there in America. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I love this chapter to the point where I just want to stay in my cover some. I want to see if I can sleep some. Again, talking about sleep, I'm an early bed. I sleep early. I wake up early. And I once had somebody, I don't know if I call this person a friend anymore, tell me that, ah, the suspect people who wake up at those kind of ungodly hours, like 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m., what are they waking up to do? They look like people who practice some sort of juju. I was like, ah! <laughs> oh my goodness. I was like, there's no point even trying to explain what happens to my brain and why I have that sleep hygiene. I'm just like, forget about it, you know, and just forget about the relationship. So I was also like, now, I, if I had explained, maybe I would have also understood their own point of view, but I didn't just want to. I really was like, uh, 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 this is just too much, right? Okay. So this is what this chapter is all about. And you know, it's many just two chapters. And I don't know if I should be feeling sad about it, but there's hope. And um, I cannot remember the title of tomorrow's chapter, but we are going to see that. And then, well, the last one and then the review. I can't thank Dr. Perry and Oprah enough. I, I mean, frankly speaking, this is such a gift. Even me, after my years of, of learning and exposure and everything, I'm still processing too much through this book about my own life and how I can help my clients better. And maybe, you know, through what I share in the world, help um, families and help people in my own little way, you know, to think about these kind of things and to do the best they can by themselves, by their children and Oh la la, it's so so beautiful. Unfortunately, a lot of our social structures have been dismantled all with this whole idea of modernism. You know, family structures before you say if it takes a village to raise a child. Well, when I read that book written by Hillary, I saw how some people were laughing in the review section, like takes which village to raise a child. Carry that your old age uh, philosophy and go away. But it really does. Oh my goodness. Well, what can I tell you, right? With the uh, residential programs, reservations, and all the gadgets and everything, even when people are together, now sometimes they find it hard to even really be present, you know? Oh, everybody wants to be on the gadget and everything. And I was just telling my boyfriend the other day, I like quality time. When we are together, let's put these phones away. I don't mind putting the thing off. I actually turn it off sometimes. Okay, well, so on to tomorrow. Let's see what tomorrow's chapter is going to hold. I really hope that people are being um, kind of inspired by my sharing. Some people give me feedback. And so I do that. And please don't bother if I'm in bed or in PJ or anything. You should have known me by now. I just keep it real and I just flow the way I flow. And that's what it is. Okay, God bless us all.